Today, not a new project video, but something a little different. Because last week, my new Xtool P2, a 55 watt CO2 laser cutter and engraver arrived. And I thought the least I can do is share my first impressions and tests with you. Because let's be honest, the reason this machine stands here in my workshop right now is thanks to you who found my videos so far worth watching. And especially thanks to those who also found them valuable enough to subscribe. So in this video, we're going to have some fun pushing the machine to its limits. We'll put its cutting precision to the test and we'll take a closer look at how this machine actually works. Because I don't know about you, but I find it truly fascinating how it's possible to cut through so many different materials with ease using nothing but light. When we open the back of the machine, we can see a fairly complex glass tube inside. This is the laser tube. And inside this laser tube, there are two mirrors, one at each end of the tube. The laser tube itself is filled with a mixture of gases, including carbon dioxide, nitrogen and helium. By using electrodes at both ends, an electric current can be generated that flows through the gas mixture. This electric current causes a chemical reaction that excites the gas molecules and produces light energy. This light then bounces back and forth between the two mirrors which amplifies the light waves. And because the front mirror is only partially reflective, part of that amplified light passes through it as a powerful laser beam that we can then use for cutting or engraving. During the process of generating the laser beam, a lot of heat is produced, which can damage the laser tube. So a water cooling system is used to keep the tube cool. Water flows through a jacket around the laser tube to dissipate that excess heat to prevent overheating and ensure stable operation to extend the life of the laser. And finally, to direct the laser beam from the laser tube in the back of the machine to the correct spot on the material, the machine uses a series of mirrors that move with the gantry and the cutting head. Now that you know how a CO2 laser works, let me show you why this machine caught my eye. Because it's not just about adding another tool to my workshop. There are actually some specific projects coming up where this machine will really come in handy. But more on that in a moment. Because after ordering the machine, I was a bit concerned about shipping. The machine has quite a few fragile parts, like the glass water-cooled gas-filled laser tube for example. But luckily my concerns were quickly taken away when the machine arrived. Because what I saw was a rocket-proof box neatly strapped down on a pallet. So the chances of it being thrown around during transport is slim to none. And it even got better when I opened the box, because everything was tightly packed in foam, even inside the machine. And if you ask me, I think many companies could take this as an example. But that aside, after unpacking, quickly skimming through the user manual and installing the software, it's time to see what this machine is really capable of. And what's great is that you can start experimenting right out of the box because the machine comes with a variety of material samples. Like many other manufacturing machines, this one comes with its own software to translate your designs into instructions that the machine can work with. And one of the first things I noticed about the software is its user friendliness in combination with the machine. Everything works super intuitively and incredibly easy. Here for example, you can almost just literally throw your material in without worrying about perfect alignment. Because inside the machine, there's a camera that lets you take a photo of the entire work area right from the software. You can then easily rotate and align your design or grid to match your material. But let's start by cutting and engraving something simple on this 3mm base wood that came with the machine to make sure everything works and is calibrated properly. Hold on, I think I forgot something. The machine has a built-in fume extraction ventilator and came with a 7 foot long flexible hose for fume removal. Unfortunately, I don't have a hole in the wall to the outside in my workshop and there's not a really quick way to do that either. What I do have are these built-in ventilation grills in my window frames, but that doesn't quite fit as you can see. So to make the hose fit properly, I designed and printed an adapter. And if I just seal off the rest of the openings with some tape, I think it should work just fine. Now luckily for me, 
I am able to print my own solution with my own 3D printer, but I can imagine not everyone has that option. If you ever need a custom part but don't have access to a 3D printer, go check out PCBWay.com. They offer a variety of services from PCB production to assembly and even 3D printing, but it doesn't stop there. They even have sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and even CNC machining. If you need to manufacture parts, there is no better service out there. Their service is extremely easy to use and you can get a quote right at your fingertips. If you're interested, you can check out the link in the video description. Ok, second try. The smoke extraction with the adapter seems to be working perfectly. And it looks like the first cut is also going smooth so far. It's like it's cutting through butter. And if I remember correctly, I also saw some sheets of plexiglass during unpacking. Let's see how the machine handles that. As if it's nothing. But so far, these are materials that came with the machine and were cut using the preset settings for the materials. So you can assume that it always works perfectly. That's why this doesn't really count if you ask me. To see what this machine can really do and what I actually want to know is whether it can cut plywood of 5, 8, 12 mm or even thicker, which just comes from the local hardware store. Because that's wood that isn't necessarily suited for laser cutting, but it's cheap and easy to obtain. Now, I did also get a 3 and 5 mm sheet from the hardware store, but we already know that 3 mm is no problem. And I'm not too worried about a 5 mm either. So let's see how the machine handles 8 mm of plywood. and also cutting through without any effort. I'm curious what it will do to 12mm then. still cutting like a hot knife through butter. But to be honest, so far I didn't expect anything else. Since Xtool itself says this laser cutter should be able to cut certain types of wood up to a thickness of 18 to 20 mm. Unfortunately, the hardware store only had sheets of 3, 5, 8 and 12 mm plywood in stock. And therefore nothing that came close to that 20 mm. But 12 and 8 mm is also 20 right and although this may not be the most realistic test we can at least give it a try right a little bit of super glue in between let it dry for a while and start cutting maybe it's because of the super glue and possibly a small air gap between the two boards or i'm not using the right settings for this cut because a visible open flame like that isn't something you're going to see while laser cutting. Whatever it is, it's probably not good for the quality of the cut, but we'll find it out in a moment. And now, the question of questions. Did it cut all the way through? It did. Not very neat, but 
that was to be expected with the flame we saw during cutting. Let's see if we can get a cleaner cut by increasing the cutting speed and up the amount of cutting passes by a few. That's already way better. Increasing the cutting speed and up the amount of cutting passes by a few. That's already way better. But then the next big question of course, how accurate is the machine? To find out we can measure the pieces we've just cut, because both the squares and the circles should be exactly 50mm. Let's start with the plexiglass pieces. The 3mm plywood, 5mm, 8 and 12 millimeters. So for right out of the box without adjusting any settings, pretty amazing if you ask me. I'm already getting more and more product ideas for this machine, but the main reason I need this laser cutter is for an upcoming video series, and not just any, but a series about my most ambitious and challenging project so far, in which I'm going to build a seaworthy 3D Banshee that if all goes according to plan, will autonomously sail across the Atlantic Ocean. And not only the project itself will require a lot of cutting and engraving, but thanks to this machine, you can also be part of the journey. But more information on that will follow soon of course. And that's just one of the projects I have planned for this machine. So stay tuned, because there's much more to come. In the meantime, I'm going to further explore this machine's limits and find out what else it's capable of. If you have ideas about what I could make with this laser cutter, let me know in the comments below.